Up until 2019, EVs were not politically polarizing, but something about Biden's campaign all of a sudden made them be Democrats versus Republicans. Almost everybody I know that owns an EV, they're Republican. In Republican states, if that state is getting green energy jobs, the governor is very pro EV and green energy. Hi, I'm David from EV World News. I'm here in studio today with my co-host engineer, Mike Herzog. How's it going, Mike? Doing good, David. All right. So our, our first topic today, we're going to cover about why Republicans won't buy EVs, which I think is kind of horse crap because I, I don't agree with this in the slightest. And, and there's even people out there that run Republicans for green energy. Up until 2019, EVs were not politically polarizing, but something about Biden's campaign all of a sudden made them be Democrats versus Republicans. And this just seems silly because for those of us who know enough about electric vehicles, we realize that whether you're all about saving the planet or whatever else, none of it really matters. EVs are just better and they're going to take over. Headlines like this, and it just it's disappointing because it just perpetuates that. And so, well, this is this is a red versus blue thing. This is a Democrat Republican thing, and it it really isn't. You know, I I think you and I are good examples of that. If you lean a certain direction, I lean a certain direction. But on this topic, we can come come together in the middle and say, you know, this this just makes sense when you talk about it from a factual standpoint and how it works and how all these things come together. It just it just makes sense. But it, it gets these labels and gets put into this space like everything else today in this political arena. And, and it's it's tough. Um, it's it's tough to get, get beyond that and just look at the facts. You know, and I've mentioned this before on here, that in Republican states, if that state is getting green energy jobs, the governor is very pro EV and green energy. And you've got a lot of states like Georgia, North and South Carolina that are really getting the brunt of the benefits from the Inflation Reduction Act, which we've talked about before. It's so poorly named. <laughs> you know, it's the it's complete opposite, but it, it, it's been good for the U.S. jobs. So th this is where this article about Republicans saying that 46% of respondents favored a gas car compared to only 19% want a fully electric car. The rest of the people, I guess, like buses and bicycles. Here is a chart, though, showing the differences between all adults that currently own, seriously considered buying, might consider buying, would not buy an EV. Now we're talking about a full electric vehicle, not a hybrid, not a plug-in hybrid, and Democrats 27% said they would never buy an EV. So you've got a certain amount of Democrats who have no interest in buying an EV. Now, what's interesting is it shows that 6% of Republicans claim they already own an EV. Almost everybody I know that owns an EV, if I know their political status, they're Republican, with, with the exception of Bill. <laughs> so I, I'm just telling you, I don't know very many liberals that drive a EV. They're almost all, and they all tend to be in either medical or tech, very highly concentrated in those fields. You know, and I, but I see, you know, independent 6%, Democrat 9 all U.S. adults 7%. It's not that big of a trend, but there are 48% of people said they would not buy an EV, period. That's a lot of percentage of the whole population. And th those numbers have gotten worse. So it was different two, three years ago before it became so politicized. And now that as it's become politicized, these numbers have definitely gotten worse. While the percentage of owning has gone up, the percentage of people said they would not buy keeps increasing as well. And people are entitled to their opinions. But we, we see that in the next, you know, we look at the wave of compared to how it was two years ago, where in two years, the prices are going to be on a lot of vehicles we haven't seen yet, like the VF3, the EX30, Hyundai Kona is taking a price drop into the 20,000s. There's... Um, you know, a couple of others, the Tesla Model 2 coming out hopefully next year. They're planning on having the first quarter of next year. So we're, we're looking at a wave of cheaper cars, and that's going to change things. When it starts being, even without the tax credit, cheaper to buy an EV than it is a gas car, I think you're just going to see much more adoption. It, it is. It's, it's market function. And, and you and I have talked about this a lot before, like, let the markets function. Let, let them land where they're going to land and, and go from, from that point in there. And, and I think we're going to see this come through naturally because no matter how you feel about 
the environmental green, one way or another, we all we all answer to the other green dollars. And, and when this starts to make sense from a financial standpoint, it's it's going to figure itself out and move that way, and it's it's going to move the needle. Hopefully, discussions like this and podcasts and opportunities like this give give people that from both sides of the aisle, whoever you might be, the opportunity to learn and see articles, see information, try to get unbiased viewpoints from folks like. That. This is just what it is. This is what's happening. This is what's on the market. These are how they perform. This is how the grid is preparing for it. Um, so hopefully it, it can enter into that conversation and give people some of that neutral neutral perspective on this is just what's happening out there. Yeah, and it, it, it's interesting too because so many people just think about it as a push for you know different things, whether it is only a push for saving the planet or if it's only a push for allowing the government to control us by having EVs that somehow they're going to control us through our cars, which I I can see some of that, but there's not any compelling evidence that they couldn't do that with a gas car too. That one really kind of escapes me. It's like, well, what are they going to do with the electric cars they can't do with gas? It's like, well, we'll turn off all the electricity. It's like- The computer chip shortage from a few years ago impacted every vehicle, not just EVs. Yeah. I mean, if you still have that 1950s you know, Ford pickup truck that you're keeping around that they're not going to be able to control that. If we want to go back and be like Cuba and only drive around 1950s automobiles, that would be one solution, right? Hi, I'm David with EV World News. If you like this video, then please press the like button. If you like the content and would like to see more videos on electric vehicles, then please hit the subscribe button. If you have some feedback for us, please let us know in the comments. Have a great day.